Put the needle on the record. You know it's time to put the needle on the record. Why? Because it's time for New York Knicks 3 and D. Talking everything New York Knicks basketball. Talking to the loss last night or the other day to the Phoenix Suns, 116-113. And, of course, Phoenix was, that, was without Beal. They were out. Uh, they were without uh, KD. Uh, the Knicks put up a valiant effort in that game. They, they once again, had to come raging back a little bit. It was a seesaw battle. It is, it is not as good as an outcome, of course, as the Miami game where the Knicks were down 21 and they made that furious run. And you had the big stop by R.J. Barrett on Jimmy Butler. But the the, the Knicks are... Um, the Knicks are an interesting team, and and we've talked about this before, and we we've talked about the fact that they 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 are just not at that next level yet. They're nine and seven right now. They're uh, what are they, what are, I mean they're um, I believe they're four and three at home. Um, so they have a stretch of road games coming up. Jalen Brunson is the New York offense, along with the at times the I guess the Robin to Jalen's Batman. Which would, of course, be um, would Ruben Rand, uh, Ruben Randall, <laughs> Ruben Randall. I'm thinking Giants would be Julius Rock the Mike by the Randall, who also had 28 points against the Suns. Um, but but Brunson's the guy. Brunson's the man. 15 to 25. You know, last night against the Suns, five for ten from three. He only went to the line twice, and he missed both of them. Uh, but there, he did have 35 points with a plus five. It, it's just not enough. And, and you look at the way this team is constructed in New York. You have you have a pretty deep bench. I like Hartenstein. I like Hart. I like DiVincenzo coming up. I like you love quickly. So they're going four deep, five deep at times, but it's just not enough. I don't like the fact that you're using Hart basically to back up for Randall. Uh, I do like the the alternating at times between the quasi shooting guard point guard uh, situation with DiVincenzo and quickly. Um, I, I just you know there's just something about this team that is missing. And, and we talked about the fact that I don't want to just go out and make a trade to make a trade. I don't want to go out and do something stupid where you bring in a disgruntled all-star who could potentially, you know, be, you know, be the one B or I should say, uh, I should have one, a, yeah, one B to, to Brunson's one a, but we've talked about this before doing that. You're probably gonna have to give up someone like Barrett. You might have to give up Grimes. You're probably gonna, they're going to probably want to have quickly thrown into the deal. So it's, it's going to be one of these situations where you break down your current roster to try to make your team better in the long run by destroying what you currently have. And I always go back to the Carmelo Anthony trade. Carmelo Anthony forced his way out of Denver. It was plain and simple. He knew the next year, the, the, the bar, the collective bargain agreement was going to change so if he waited vis a vis free agency to go to New York, because that was his that was his destination of choice, he was going to have to force his way out that year because when the collective bargain agreement changed, he was gonna make he was gonna have the opportunity to get less money than if he pushed he pushed himself out of Den- Denver right then and there. So the Knicks in their infinite wisdom, of course, traded the farm, literally traded the farm for Carmelo Anthony along with a bunch of picks. And we kind of know where, how that panned out and how that worked. And I think Leon Rose is smart enough to understand you need to build a continuity. You need to build a core. But in doing so, you can't destroy what you have to bring in something that may not help create that winning monster. Now, I'm always thinking to myself with the Knicks, you, and this is kind of the misconception, I think, at times. Uh, they have this plethora of first-round picks going into 2024. Because, honestly, if I have a trade in mind. I have a trade in mind that you can literally find someone to back up Julius Randle. You can kind of replace Obi Toppin. He is a gentleman that would be readily, probably readily available for a first-round pick and maybe something else in return. He's, he's got a little bit of an injury issue. But he he could fit into the Knicks athletically. He could fit into Thibodeau's scheme and reference it defensively. And that player is, of course, no, I'm not going to tell you right now. That's going to be tomorrow's podcast. But to get him, you're going to have to move some of your first rounders. And allegedly, we have two, you know, we have four first round picks in 2024. But I was looking at it and I was thinking about it. Honestly, we don't. And, and this is kind of the thing that there's a misconception with the Knicks fans that we have all these first round picks. We have all these picks, but if you actually go through it, you take a look at the wizards pick. Now that was all part of the Kembe Walker salary dump. And that was all basically to sign basically to clear cap space to sign Brunson. Now the pick in 2024 is a top 12 protected. 
And right now the wizards aren't looking too hot. <laughs> I mean, even the Knicks crushed them 120 to 99 the other night, or the other night, like a week ago. Um, and when you got people like Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzman as your top scorers, it, it just doesn't look like th- that's, that's going to come to fruition that we're going to have that pick that, that, that top 12 protected 20. There's, there's no way we're getting that pick. If we're going to, if we're going to be sincerely honest about it. Now, the issue also is this, and this is what, which kind of gets to me a little bit. If that pick does not convey by 2026, it automatically becomes two first, uh, two second rounders. So you can count that pick and take it and throw it out the window. Then you take a look at, you have the Pistons pick, which is also <laughs> all part of that 2022 draft, which was the trade that basically for, you know, the, the swap for Brunson dumping Walker's salary. And um, this one is a top 18 protected. And honestly, you're not looking that good. You're not looking that good either. I mean, they, they started off basically with a nine game losing streak a couple uh, in reference to uh, in, in reference to what Detroit did. Um, they could turn it around. They could move forward, but it doesn't look like it's going to convey very well either in 2024. It becomes a top 13 protected pick in 2025, a top 11 pick protected in 2026, and then a top nine protected in 2027. And then if it doesn't convey by 2027, it automatically becomes a second round pick. Are are we seeing a pattern here? And then we have to move into the Mavericks pick. Think about this for a minute. The Mavericks pick, and that, and this is part of the Porzingis trade back in 19. This one's actually looking pretty good. This one is going to be a top 10 protected. Um, I mean, Dallas is a win now team. So y- you figure it, it's going to be, um, it's going to be there. So you kind of have to figure that one is obviously, uh, unless something implodes in Dallas, we are going to have that pick. And then vis-a-vis, of course, the NBA rules, the Knicks have to have their own pick next year in 2024 because you can't trade away two years in a row. So we will technically have two first-round picks. Now, I know we just talked about briefly about finding a player, maybe using one of those two picks to turn around and get some help, not only to back up Randall, but to, to fill a little bit of a little bit more athleticism in, in that second unit. But the thing is also this. It, the Brunson situation is not going to fix itself. And I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not looking to mortgage everything to go get a guy, but you need some more scoring be, outside of Brunson. Now I still think that RJ Barrett's going to be, have a step up year that he's going to, he's going to show something this season. He's, he's played kind of, uh, uh, I mean, his play has been a little bit off since coming back from the migraines. And, you know, in the migraine situation, really, it really does take a lot. It really does take a lot out of you. Um, so we kind of have to wait and see what happens with him because before the migraine, migraines, you know, he was playing, pro, you know, was playing extremely well. He had uh, three 20 point games in a row. Um, he also had the big 26 point game against Atlanta, the one, the 24 point game against Boston. But ever since coming back from that migraine and missing those uh, six days, you know, he only had 15 in Charlotte, 15 against the, excuse me, 14 against Minnesota. He had the big 18 and the big stop against Miami. And then he only had nine yesterday or today. I guess it was yesterday against the Phoenix suns. Um, so you kind of hope that you have that core three. Uh, of Brunson, Randall, and Barrett. But the problem is there is not a lot of consistency at times between Julius Rock, the Michael Randall and, and Barrett. And I'm hoping Barrett gets, you know, he gets back into the swing when he starts feeling a little bit better. He starts feeling his oats a little bit more and he can, he can sally forward a little bit more and push into, you know, that second, le- that next level, maybe not an all-star, but maybe just below an all-star and doing something like it's going to help Brunson. But Brunson is a man on an island. Right now, he's, uh, he's averaging 24 points, 3.4 rebounds, almost five assists, shooting 44% from the floor. Um, he's going to have his up nights. He's going to have his bad nights. He's going to have his off shooting nights, but he's still going to give you that grittiness, that toughness, that toughness. If you take a look over the last five games, 32, 32, 25, 24, 35, he's still going to put up the points. And then the Knicks in those uh, five games are three, uh, excuse me, yeah, are three and two right now. Um, I think the Knicks are pretty good locking in around the five, six seed again, but we want to be better. We want to move forward. 
And like I said, you you have some expiring contracts you can move for. You have some young talent. We do have the two first rounders, like I said, we just talked about. But I do want to fill the hole right now behind what we did with, after losing Obi Toppin. I do want to move around that. I want I want to find that 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 key cog and that athletic cog behind uh, Mr. Randall. But like I said, there if there is an opportunity to go out and find someone, I'm not saying you got to go get Carl Anthony Towns. I'm not saying you're going to go out and get Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid. I, I I don't want Donovan Mitchell, and I I I'm fearful of a Donovan of a Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson backcourt, because you're going to have to win games like 156 to 142 because neither of those two guys can play defense. But there's got to be a guy out there that can come in, provide the scoring, maybe be a starter, maybe come off the bench, be a six man, kind of, you know, kind of like quickly, maybe move quickly into the lineup. Who knows? But I do have an idea. I do have a thought process about who we can bring in to back up Julius to replace the Obi Toppin. And we're going to talk about that another time because you know what, guys, this is Tim. This is New York Knicks three and D don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And I've said it before. Don't forget to ring that bell. Cause you want to know why? That would be awesome.